Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. This is part 9, fitting the other two engines, the boiler and the hand pump. Slightly more difficult than it looks. The problem is positioning. The middle engine is a vertical engine, as is the one on the left hand side, but this one, the Perseus, is a horizontal engine. And if I measure it up and position it midway between the edge of the board and the centre engine, it just doesn't look right. The flywheel, for instance, on the Perseus engine, is over to the left hand side of the engine, so if it was in the middle it would be great, but it's not. And when I position the engine on the baseboard, with the midline of the engine exactly the same distance from the edge of the board to the centre engine, it just looks wrong. So I had to make a decision, and the positioning that I finally arrived at looked good to my eye. In the end it worked out that the baseboard of the Perseus engine is three and a half inches from the edge of the aerial engine in the centre. And now I'm making a mark on the baseboard four and a half inches in, and that's one of the places I'm going to drill a hole to mount the Perseus engine in place. And without being nervous at all, the first part of the job is to drill two three sixteenths of an inch diameter holes in the baseboard. In this clip you will notice that I'm using the same piece of mahogany as I did with the aerial engine to align the Perseus engine to the edge of the baseboard. Then I turn the baseboard on its end and counter drill the three sixteenths of an inch diameter holes to take the wood screws. I could have used much longer wood screws and countersunk the holes, but I think this is a better way of doing it. Now for the important part, it's time to drill the pilot holes in the baseboard of the Perseus. And as shown previously when I drilled the baseboard of the aerial engine, I'm using a piece of silicone rubber fuel tubing around the drill bit. That's to stop the drill bit going in too far and coming through the other side. In this clip I'm screwing the engine in position, and now it's time to move over to the left hand side and fit the vertical engine. As I mentioned in the first episode, this engine has the unfortunate name of Isis. But in this case, Isis is the name of an Egyptian goddess. So I don't really mention much about the name of this for obvious reasons. You have to be very careful on the internet these days. A friend of mine runs an event which is a World War II battlefield experience, and he has armoured cars and other pieces of military equipment. And he was searching on the internet for rocket launchers. He wanted a rocket launcher for his collection. I don't think he actually found any rocket launchers on eBay, but the next morning there was a knock on the door and it was some policemen and some men in suits who were making inquiries as to why he was typing into the internet the words rocket and launcher. And he may have typed in some other words at the time which also probably flagged up as being suspicious. So while I've been talking about internet problems, I've been drilling the baseboard, as before, to mount this engine in place. I thought I'd tell you about my friend's problem with his rocket launcher, because fitting this engine in place is identical to fitting the other two engines. This engine fits exactly on the midway point between the edge of the aerial engine and the edge of the baseboard. As you can see from this clip, it looks like this engine's been mounted on several baseboards in its lifetime judging by the amount of holes that have already been drilled in this engine's baseboard. And now I'm counterboring the holes underneath. Then with the baseboard hanging over the edge of the bench, I can then screw the engine firmly in position. And when I lift the baseboard into a vertical position, as you can see the engines do not fall off the board. Jobs like this can be a bit nerve-wracking, you only get them wrong once, but this is okay. It's time now to fit the boiler onto the baseboard, but positioning of the boiler is very important. If I put it too near the back of the baseboard, then the pipes are going to overhang. I also need to leave room at the side of the boiler for the hand pump, and finally I settled on the position. I'll leave that for a moment and look at the condenser and water tank assembly. I painted this yesterday with some satin black, but the satin black is a little bit too shiny. Luckily, I have some other satin black that's not so shiny. Aesthetically, it's quite important that the tank assembly matches the boiler. Before overcoating though, I'm giving this a rub down. And I'm using 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper and then I'm wiping it over with this stuff, it's called panel wipe. This will remove any residue from the sanding process. I'm now in the outer part of the workshop, right by a wide open garage door. The paint I'm using is HMG Satin Black. This is really good quality paint and it gives a brilliant, almost matte finish. Not quite though, it's satin. 
but it's more matte than satin if you see what I mean. To shorten the sequence I've speeded up the video considerably, but as you can see I'm putting fairly thin coats on, but a lot of them. Now I need to allow some time to elapse for the paint to dry, so it's back into the workshop to fit the boiler. Once again I'm checking everything is square, and in this clip I'm using a transfer punch to mark the position of the holes in the boiler mounting onto the baseboard. Now I need to drill some mounting holes, and for this I'm using a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill, and I've fitted a green bit of silicone rubber tubing onto the drill bit to act as a depth stop, because I don't want to drill all the way through. 5 30 seconds of an inch is tapping size for a 2BA tap, so now I'm using a 2BA tap to thread the wood. This is perfectly acceptable because mahogany is a hardwood, and hardwood can be threaded using taps in the same way as metal. And a good tip if you want to strengthen the threads that you've made in the hardwood, put some cyanoacrylate adhesive down there, make sure it's the thin stuff, and that will harden the threads that you've cut. The next component to mount on the baseboard is the hand pump. I'm using a steel rule just to make sure it's in the right position relative to the clack valve on the boiler. And in exactly the same way as I fitted the boiler, I used a transfer punch first to transfer the positions of the holes in the hand pump onto the baseboard. And then I drilled the holes using a number 48 drill, after which I threaded the holes 6BA and now I'm screwing in some 6BA brass bolts. And these hold the hand pump securely to the baseboard. The mounting base for the boiler is made of aluminium and as such it was a little bit chipped, there was quite a lot of aluminium showing through the paint. So I thought it would be a good time to just touch in the paint using some HMG Paints Satin Black, which is the same paint that you've just seen me use to repaint the condenser and water tank assembly. And here is the tank assembly in its approximate position on the baseboard, and you can clearly see from this clip that it's a good match for the paint on the boiler. I'd just like to mention something about the aluminium top caps on the boiler and the tanks that I made. Quite a few of my more meticulous than usual type of viewers took the trouble to write in to tell me all about the cathodic corrosion problem with aluminium and copper. I'm not entirely stupid, so I am aware of this. But look at the boiler cap. That's made by Cotswold Heritage, and they seem to think it's fine to use a piece of aluminium for the top of the boiler. I just wanted to match the aluminium cap. Apart from being a fully working model, this steam plant will be a display piece, so it will spend most of its life in a very warm environment, a very warm and dry environment, so the absence of an electrolyte will mean that cathodic corrosion will not take place. That's all I've got to say on the subject, and this is the end of the episode, so thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.